Hello, this is Mark Patterson, University Ombuds for Cal State University Channel Islands with another episode of Channel Our Potential, where we ask the question, what does it mean to you to channel our potential at CSE Channel Islands? My guest today is Tiffany Elliott, who is the director and coordinator for the living and learning communities at CSE Channel Islands and also coordinator for embedded peer mentor programs. Tiffany is a graduate of CSU Fullerton. With that, let's go to the interview. Hey, Tiffany, it's good to have you here. and. Uh, Welcome to Channel Our Potential, a series where we talk about how people can connect and build connections across campus to collaborate. You know, it was really such a neat opportunity when you and I happened to be tabling next to each other at the Get Ready for College at the CSUCI, kind of the resources fair for potential students. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't really even known about your role in learning communities. So maybe can you tell me a little bit about uh, what that means? Uh, for mm -hmm. students and employees at, at Channel Islands. Right. So to put it in easy terms is they're all different communities based on major, identity, anything, and they're all linked to courses or connected to courses. So that means once you join a community, um, each person in that community takes about two or three classes together. And the cool thing about it is the classes usually go along with whatever the learning community is. So let's say you're in a business learning community, the courses are required classes that you need to take for some business majors. So you get that out of the way. Um, the nice thing that along with learning communities is that they get an embedded peer mentor in one of their classes, which I help supervise. Um, they get very dedicated professors because all the faculty in the learning communities, we make sure they all work together and know what each other are doing. And we get, um, they, the students get like events, trips and activities that are catered to what they're learning in the classroom. That's really all paid for. So there's a lot of ways to collaborate with this because there's so much. Can you give us a little insight as to why Channel Islands does this? One, it's been proven and we have data that's showing it helps with retention. It helps with um, keeping grades up. Students that were in learning communities their first year, they had a higher GPA compared to students who may have not been in a learning community because they have that sense of community. Again, community, we say that a lot. Um, so a lot of it is really because it's proven and there's data showing that it helps students succeed and it helps them stay in college and helps them graduate. Can you share anything about how it works or how it affects employees, particularly faculty who are involved with it? Learning communities are a huge collaboration. We have something in um, the summer called the Learning Community Faculty Collaboration Institute, where all the faculty and learning communities get together. Um, they talk about the links that they may have with each other's courses. Um, they talk about what we want to do. We talk about event planning. So um, for faculty, they get a lot of opportunities to learn about each other, learn what other departments are doing, and really see the bigger picture in terms of, okay, even though I'm this one department, we're all working together. How can we do this for the good of the students? So um, faculty benefit a lot from it. A lot of them are very passionate to be teaching in them. That's exciting to hear. And Maybe we can turn a little bit to you personally, Tiffany. Can you share what got you interested in this aspect of collaborative uh, learning and learning community models? I remember when I was in college, um, what really pushed me through were the either staff or faculty that sort of gave me that extra idea of like, I see you, you know, keep going. So that is really what pushes me and seeing how it affects the students. I know it works. I love the collaboration aspect. I love meeting new people. And I get to do that all the time, working with learning communities, because it's a big collaboration. So that's just a little bit of why I'm into it. <laughs> well, and I could you know, tell from when we first met that you definitely enjoy connecting with people and, and helping kind of expand the vision of, of the way we learn and work together. Can you share any any, any examples of, of collaboration that you've seen? You mentioned you know, briefly like the, the workshop. Uh, are there other examples that are worth sharing? In terms, technically, we are academic affairs, but we collaborate heavily with student affairs and housing. Um, some of our communities are living learning communities. And um, mm. you know how I mentioned before how we have embedded peer mentors? Well, that means for those communities that they live on the same floor, they also have RAs. So um, one thing I do is I collaborate with our living learning community coordinator and a lot of people in housing, and we have meetings where 
the peer mentors in those classes and the RAs have like biweekly meetings where they get together and they could talk about either gaps with students. The UPM could say, ah, this person isn't turning in. I noticed they're not turning in their assignments. The RA on the floor could be like, oh, well, I noticed they're up at this time on this night. You know, let me talk to them. And it's kind of neat to, to, to see those opportunities for understanding kind of spring up. You can't plan in advance, like that example you shared about a, a student having difficulties in a particular class and that providing an opportunity for an RA. That's that's neat that, that you're able to kind of create this organically. And let me pivot to another area of real concern and, and, and challenge for Channel Islands and, and across higher education, and that's improving equity for people of different races, ethnicities, gender, identities. Um, how is this work with learning communities or your work here at Channel Islands uh, a part of improving equity? That's really at the core of what learning communities are. They were really built so we can level that playing field with students and they get that one-on-one -on -one support. Um, in some ways, uh, many of the students in learning communities are a part of historically underrepresented groups of students. So we have that large and we have some learning communities that are based around, you know, I said we have major culture. So some can be based off identity. So we have, let's say the Michelle Cyril Cerny community. Um, it's connected with Chicano studies. Um, and then we have like the um, Dr. Bedford and Dr. Irene Pinkert learning community that's based around um, Africana studies. That's exciting too. And and let me make it personal again. You know, Tiffany, we'd spoken before and I understand you identify as a black woman. Mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel for you? So it is very rewarding. Um, when I was in college, I what brought me through, I had support from my parents, my family, but what brought me through when I was in classes were those little staff or faculty that was like, okay, okay I see where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from. We're going to help each other. So um, I see the value in that, and it is really rewarding that I'm providing that for students. Yeah, that's it's nice to see that connection. And, and it reminds me, I imagine, I, I think you said you've been involved with the Black Faculty Staff Association as well. Mm -hmm. Has that pr proven a way of making connections or helping uh, provide opportunities for collaboration? We do like to, we want to collaborate too with the Black Student Union. But for one way that I'll give an example is, is um, we had a learning community welcome reception. And this was for all learning community students who had just joined learning communities. And um, we had a section to where, um, we had a lot of campus partners that were able to speak. And we had a section to where black faculty, a representative from Black Faculty and Staff Association, um, Dr. Gary Gordon, he's the co-chair, he was able to speak and as well as the director of housing. But he was able to speak and get up and talk on behalf of the association. So students saw that. Um, we had um, Black Student Union come and they spoke to the students, so everyone saw that. So there's so many ways to collaborate and it's helped, I think, enrich what learning communities are. Mm, it kind of feeds back into the, the value of the learning communities when they see those other connections. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, what challenges or, or other opportunities do you see when it comes to collaborating or connecting at Channel Islands, either for employees or students or both? There's something special about uh, working cross departments. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I think people learn better what each other are doing. I think people have sort of a sensitivity to like the work people are doing and the care for it when they learn and they're working across departments, just knowing where each other are coming from and knowing the work that each are doing it puts things in perspective for each person and it helps so much. That's something that maybe isn't as often talked about when it comes to collaboration, that it can be uncomfortable, but it also gives viewpoints that might generate new ways of, of collaborating or working together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always. And I've learned that even with this, um, I've learned just with event planning, I've learned so much with collaboration when I've collaborated with other departments. I may have done it one way and then I collaborate with someone else and I'm like, oh, we do this. And I'm thinking, oh, that's a good idea too. I wouldn't have thought about that if we went to work together. So there's a lot of opportunities. That's a great, a great point that you're open to new ideas when you're oriented towards collaborating as well. 
Well, let me give you the concluding question that, that sort of ties this whole series together. What does it mean to you to channel our potential at CSU Channel Islands? One way to channel our potential is um, to use the resources that we have here. Um, so I'd say in a student way, use the resources that you have while you're here at Channel Islands because there's so much support and it can really bring out more in you. Um, for a full level for staff and everything, I think a way to channel your potential, um, I've been saying it a lot, but uh, think about ways to collaborate. Think about ways to work with each other. I think I, maybe from my experience, I learn more about myself when I'm working with other people and I get different ideas. Um, it's really an opportunity for growth and it really does, I think, channel a person's potential. So think of ways to collaborate. It doesn't have to be big, it can be small, but think of just baby steps to sort of get you on the way. And I think that helps a lot. Well, you've definitely illustrated that in the the time you've been here and the, and the work you've been doing to build up something that has been a, a big uh, benchmark for success for Channel Islands. So thank you very much, Tiffany. It's really been exciting talking to you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>